Guys, what's up and welcome to Skirt Garage. My name is Connor and of course, I'm very excited to have you on the channel today because today we're gonna to be talking about another modification that I have done to this 2015 Jaguar F-Type R. Today, we're gonna to be talking about polyurethane bushings. These are the ones that I ordered for this car. I've actually been running them on this car for about 10,000 miles. So today, what I wanna do is explain why I got these um, how they have held up in the last 10,000 miles. And of course, I'm gonna give you guys a very thorough DIY installation video on how to do it yourself if you are such inclined to do so. So without further ado, let's get started. And like always, if you guys are stopping by for the first time, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And of course, hit that little notification bell so we can see you on the next episode. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay guys, let's quickly talk about why I got these. Now, this honest to goodness was like the very first modification I ever did to this car. And it's it's mostly because when I got this car, the cars I had previously were pretty intense. You know, I had Lotuses, M2, M3 that were pretty uh, track oriented. And this car from factory, it has uh, more supple suspension. It's more of a GT car. And so when you would turn, there was just a little bit of body roll up towards the front. You could feel a little bit of push. And honestly, part of that was just the tires that this car has stock. It has um, Pirelli tires, which don't have real firm sidewalls on them to begin with. And so the combination of having those Pirelli tires and a little bit softer anti-roll bars meant that you could feel the car leaning a little bit when cornering. And so I wanted to stiffen that up a little bit. So I looked at these. These are uh, polyurethane anti-roll bar bushings. Now what they do is only affect the cornering aspect of the car suspension. Now mind you, if you're going straight and if you're going over bumps, these do nothing to hurt your ride. The only time these are ever felt is when you're cornering hard. And so I found a set that is half street, half track, and I think that that's perfect for me because uh, in my opinion, I think it only stiffened up the body roll by about 10 or 15%. It's really not that much, but it was enough for me to notice less push when cornering really hard. And if you guys remember, I do autocross my car. I do like to push it uh, around corners. And so this was a really great investment for me. And, and it was only like 80 bucks. And so the combination of, you know, limiting some of the uh, cornering body roll while not hurting the suspension going over bumps or not making it any more crashy or uncomfortable. And the fact that it's, it's honestly pretty cheap. You know, like I said, 80 bucks to get these done really not that bad. I can leave the link in the description below where to get these if you guys are interested. But yeah, guys, that's ultimately why I went with these polyurethane bushings. And if you guys are interested in making it a little bit more firm going around corners, but not totally ruining your ride, I do recommend them. I think it's been a very worthwhile modification. Okay, guys, let's quickly talk about the size that you need when ordering these polyurethane anti-roll bar bushings. Now, my car has a 32 millimeter anti-roll bar. And so when buying these, you need to either get exactly 32 millimeters or it's actually recommended that you get 0.5 millimeters smaller so that they can grip onto the bar more securely for a longer period of time. So I actually bought a 31 0.5 millimeter anti-roll bar bushing from polyurethane. And another thing, it's really important that you guys measure your anti-roll bar before buying these anti-roll bar bushings because uh, manufacturers love to change the width of the anti-roll bar between model years and uh, different trims of the car. So it's really important that you check it and it's really easy to do so. All you have to do is turn your wheel all the way over to the right or to the left one way or the other. Use one of these, this is called a micrometer. 
It can measure in millimeters or inches. Most of the aftermarket anti-roll bar bushing companies will ask that you measure in millimeters. So you just set millimeter, you open it up to the desired amount and it tells you exactly how big the bar is. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this if you guys wanna check it out. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, that's where I got mine. Okay, so once you have the right size and you know what kind of use you want to have this anti-roll bar bushing for, the next thing up is to install it. Now, this was actually really simple on this F-Type. Uh, if you know what to do, if you go in there blindly, you can run into some stop signs and I'm gonna point that out when I do this DIY installation video. Bear in mind, it took me about an hour to an hour and a half to get this done. And I think the majority of that time was spent just jacking the car up and removing all the plastic trim pieces underneath the car. So it is very easy to do. Just make sure you remove a couple little barriers in between where you get the brackets off and I will show you exactly how to do that right now. All right, you join me underneath the car. We are gonna start with this little I guess it'd be a curb guard. It runs all the way around the front of the car. We are going to remove all of these. All right, now you can slide these out. They have like little pins you kind of pull down and out. Put one of them down, push forward, it all comes out as a unit. All right, now we are gonna do this piece here. It's got one, two, three, four. And the same thing on that side over there, it's an eight millimeter. All right. All right, here I have my 90 degree wrench with a Torx 30. There are a lot of Torx 30s. They're all around the outer seam and there's two inside of the fender lining. So I'm gonna start by doing the fender linings on both sides, then I'm gonna run the whole outside seam. Then I'm gonna pop underneath the car and I'll show you right now, there are four that are hidden. One there, 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 and there. And then holding up the back part, you have two Phillips and then two 10 millimeter bolts. You can see one there. And I think my game plan is to go ahead and remove the front four that are kind of hidden right there, prop it up with my knee, remove the Phillips, and then lastly remove the 10 millimeter bolts because they're the strongest. Okay, we got that out. Um, I think you guys can tell how many that is. I put the screws back where they went and the 10 back where it went so I won't get confused down the road. But yeah, this is what we're looking like right now. Okay, now we're on to the underbelly of the engine. There are two 10 millimeter bolts in the front and two 10 millimeter bolts in the rear. I'm gonna quickly remove these and then show it to you guys when I'm all done here. It is very tight space, so I can't hold the camera. But there you go, as you can see, like I said, there's two in the front and two in the back for total. Now it is on the ground and that is everything. Now we should be able to get on to the anti-roll bars. All right guys, before we get underneath the car, I want to help orientate you real fast. This is a view of the anti-roll bar bushings and their brackets uh, looking from the top of the motor down onto the frame. So that's the frame right there and the anti-roll bar bushing runs across it. It's just like any other one you've ever seen on any other car. I'm only trying to show you this now because once I show you the shots down there while I'm actually replacing these and taking it off, it's kind of dark and uh, if you don't have a real good idea of what you're looking at, it can be a little bit confusing. But there you go, I'm gonna start on the passenger side, which is the right side here in the United States, and then we're gonna move on to the left side. Okay, now that you're underneath the car, I need you to remove two 13 millimeter bolts on each side of the bracket. Once you do that, the bracket comes right off, and then it's time to remove the anti-roll bar bushing itself. It has a little slat, you can tell right there, I'm kind of wedging it open. That, you just pry open and you pull it right off. All right, this isn't totally necessary, but I want to show you, there's a little shield that covers up the passenger side anti-roll bar bushing. You can see it right there. It's held in by three little pop rivets. 
This is mine. I've already taken it off and it's loose, so it's no longer covering the anti-roll bar bushing, but how you get to it is you just swing on over to the wheel well side of the car, and I'm pointed to one hole right there, and the other one is right underneath that shock tower. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but there's usually an easy and a hard side when doing a job, and this is the hard side. For whatever reason, uh, Jag decided to put a, I don't know if it's some sort of cooler radiator, it's got some hoses on it, but it butts up right up next to where you'd put your socket when removing the anti-roll bar bushing bracket. And so this little uh, control module or whatever it is, you need to remove it or at least displace it before you can actually get the bracket off. It's only held in place by one 10 millimeter bolt at the back. So what I'm going to have you do is actually come out, remove the wheel on the driver's side if you're in the United States, remove that little 10 millimeter bolt, and with that 10 millimeter bolt gone, you can actually kind of move it around. It's a little bit more pliable. And with that being more pliable and freely movable, you can actually remove this bracket a lot easier. And now you're ready to go. Okay guys, these are the original sway bar bushings that came on the car. I'm actually doing this job now twice. The first time I did it, I just left these original ones in my old packaging for the new polyurethane ones, but I brought them out just to kind of show you guys. This is what they look like with 30,000 miles on the car. They're kind of held open a little bit and they're not completely worn down, they actually look fine. These new polyurethane bushings actually have 10,000 miles on them and they almost look brand new. I honestly think it's pretty impressive that they look this good for having 10,000 miles on them. So I just want to give you guys a quick little comparison. They both fit inside of the bracket evenly and they have the same generic shape. So you guys are good to go if you do buy these. Okay, right now we're about to grease these surfaces that surround the polyurethane bushings. And believe it or not, this is the most important part of the entire installation. Now, polyurethane bushings are known for two things. The first thing is that they decrease the amount of body roll uh, around corners and the amount of flexure that your chassis will have. The second thing that they're known for is that they squeak like crazy. So when you apply this uh, grease on it, this is specially made from polyurethane, it comes with these bushings, you need to be very liberal with the amount that you put on them. Anything that has a contact point, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you just go ahead and you lube it up. I lubed every single surface that's touching the bracket the bar, and anything that could possibly squeak. I did this to ensure that on my very nice, luxurious F-Type, it still sounds very nice and luxurious. All right, I was not able to spread the sway bar bushing and have the camera going at the same time, but what I am doing right now is placing the screws back into the bracket and getting it started. What I would recommend is that you do one at a time on each side, but don't completely tighten them down yet. When you are ready to tighten them down, it's 63 newton meters or 46.5 foot pounds. Well, all right guys, that is it. The only thing left to do is to put the other trim pieces back onto the car after you've tightened down those brackets and you are good to go. This is a very easy mod to do. I actually feel the difference when going around corners it adds some life back into this F-Type when cornering. It makes you feel like it's a little bit more sporty than perhaps the car came um, stock. So with that, that is gonna do it for us here at Skirt Garage. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you are a newcomer. I'd really appreciate that. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great day. Peace.